integrity matter? Why does it matter to yourself, to others? Why would integrity matter to the energetic field all around us, the source of all things that many of us call God? We see integrity. We see it in like college banners and we see it in high schools and businesses and people say it all the time. But do we really forget what it means? Like, what does it mean to live in integrity? I think it's a vital subject that we really should ask ourselves and be really aware of. And I looked up the definition, I copied and pasted this for us because it's a, it's a moral code, it's ethics, it's uh, being wholesome, unimpaired, being complete. To me, it means well-rounded, to be true to my word. And some of us are a little older, may remember, uh, when you shook somebody's hand and you looked them in the eye and you said something, it meant something. And if you did not honor your word when you shook somebody's head, hand to do the thing you were going to do, you were kind of ostracized in your own service because the reputation preceded you. That is something that's been fading away in this country for the past few decades. And I think it's something that we can bring back, that we should bring back. Because when you look at a man in the eyes and you say something, you're giving your energy, your force over to that person to say, you can count on me. Are we living in integrity whenever uh, we cheat on somebody? You're in, a, you're in a relationship and all of a sudden, you know, you find your girl cheating or she finds you cheating. Sometimes, kind of a gray area, but if you're in a committed relationship, uh, the answer is absolutely you are not living in integrity. And you know, if y'all are living in a very unhealthy relationship, then just stop it. <laughs> just, just stop. You know, one of the fastest ways to increase our stress level, I think we can all agree we're all pretty damn stressed. But why make it worse on ourselves? Why live in a more stressful life with more anxiety, more fear, and living alone? Like nobody wants a friend they cannot count on. Nobody wants that friend that says, yeah, man, I'm going to be there for you tomorrow, and then you never show up. I'm going to be there, and I'm not going to be dependent. Yeah, I'm going to help you. You know, in our heart of hearts, we know. We know when we shake somebody's hand, and they normally do this number with that little wimpy, ass hand and they look down they don't even look at you in the eye there's a real good chance that you cannot count on that person who wants to be around somebody like that if you're that person why are you being that person be the person you want to become you can't get a job you can't get a girl because they know you know girls talk and they got social media now and they all tell all the other girls what a cheating prick you are so you know unless they're just a a girl you don't want to have a relationship with and you don't really want to mess with and they don't want to mess with you business partners don't want business people that have reputations of screwing everybody over you want to avoid them people just give you the hand hey man i've heard about you you gotta go they just pass on you they just leave you alone everybody's pointing the finger at you nobody wants to be around a liar nobody believes you you know we all want to be trusted i think even the liars maybe that's why they lie so much because they want people to love them and they want to be trusted. But you're making it worse on yourself. You know it. You can't have meaningful relationships and build your inner strength if you're not living in integrity. It's something to really be avoided. How about being willfully ignorant? Is that uh, living in integrity? Like if we're not using our critical thinking and our reasoning that the universe, this mother earth gave us, are we insulting energies of the universe by not utilizing and questioning and reasoning is that living living in integrity by not utilizing our minds how about this is this living in integrity this video went viral this week this little kid is going to school and he has a gaston flag patch on his shirt on his jacket or whatever it is. if y'all don't know what the gaston flag is it is the big yellow flag with a snake and it says don't tread on me it is the flag that Franklin and our founding fathers used to fight the largest army known to man at the time for our freedoms that are quickly vanishing. The school teachers said it's against our policy to allow that. It's against our policy to allow the expression of personal autonomy and freedom in this country. She didn't even understand the history of the flag. And is it living in integrity as a community, as a parent, as a father? To allow that kind of stuff to happen? To people to live in ignorance and not even understand what they are talking about? How about this? This was in Dallas. 
drag queens becoming increasingly common. Elementary kids get a special surprise with some twerking drag queens. You know, if you want to be a drag queen, who cares? You know, who cares? But is it appropriate to go to a bunch of little kids and have a clown dressed up twerking their ass in front of a bunch of little kids? Well, the answer is no. So as a community, are we living in integrity by thinking that's okay? No, what's okay is supporting a Gadsden flag and saying you have the right to be and do what you want to do. Do not impose your perversion on somebody else. If you want to do something in the privacy of your home or in your groups, do it. Do it. That's why I proudly fly a Gadsden flag. Because I support your rights to do whatever you want to do so long as it does not infringe upon somebody else. How about that? How many of you have stumped? Like we had some people that came out here last week and I really like them. I'm sure you're going to be watching the video. You stink. How many of us have been around somebody and you're like, damn dude, you really stink. How about put some deodorant on and take a shower? How about having some personal respect for yourself? Is that living in integrity? To walking around being nasty? I'm going to say no. It's pretty damn stupid. How about when fat people tell you you're getting fat? <laughs> How about that? I mean, is that living in integrity when we are so judgmental and crazy that we have our own issues and we're so messed up that we can sit over there and point at somebody else because we want to make ourselves feel bad. We want to put somebody else down so we think we're looking better in front of other people and ourselves. That's not living in integrity either. Not even close. How about this? How many videos have we all seen where somebody's running up and punching somebody, an old lady's getting mugged, and everybody, the first thing they do, instead of living in integrity, they pull out their phone. Oh, I better video this. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, where's manhood gone? The, the masculine man that says, I am not going to allow that woman or that frail man or something to, I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow you, like what happened, I forget where, in the Northeast recently, where the woman was raped on the subway. And people bury their heads in the phone and pretend like it's not happening. That's not integrity. That's not an integrity-filled country. How do we live like that? What are we doing to ourselves? Because that energy comes back to us. So we got to fill ourselves full of self uh, love and self-pride and work on ourselves so that we can radiate something positive and wrap our arms around and embrace the integrity of what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman. It's vital. It's vital to our survival. People just let somebody go hit a park. Little kid. I mean, wow. We're going to switch this around just a little bit because there's a lot of ways to view integrity. Think about it in this way. God and I know we have a, quite a large, uh, I say large, we have a decent amount of uh, atheists that watch us because they find it intriguing. And I think we're going to be able to uh, introduce them to ideas and help bring them into the universal energies of knowing themselves better so they can communicate with others better, thus so they can understand and feel the energies of the cosmos, what we mostly call God. So you think of uh, natural frequency. The earth has its own frequency. Right? Most people have never even heard that. They don't even understand what that means. The earth itself pulses. It has a heartbeat. And we're being disconnected from what we are. All the food we eat, all the water we drink, everything comes from earth. Everything. You people weren't the same, me either, as we were yesterday because we pissed and we sat on the pot. We're constantly flowing. We're shedding off cells. We're becoming new people and rebuilding ourselves all the time. We are fluid, and where does all that come from? It comes from Earth. We are not separate. It is not some distant thing. It is in all of us right now. But wow, scientists have known this for a long time. And when we wear our tennis shoes and our rubber soles on our feet, it's just like an electrician that wears rubber gloves on a hot wire. We're insulating ourselves from the frequencies of the Earth itself. We're separating ourselves. So if we lose our connection, and now that some of y'all have been introduced to this idea. Do we move forward in life knowing that we are losing our connection from Mother Earth and then never think about it because we're not using our minds and our curiosity to go look it up ourselves and figure out what that means? You know, people and practices from many thousands of 
from the Native American Indians, they understood this practice very well. They had a huge reverence for Mother Earth. And so did ancient cultures all over the world. You know, we ran, I, I didn't run anybody. The United States government at the time ran them all because they were savages, because they didn't think like we did. And, you know, these people were coming, they were coming here because they were escaping religious persecution and extreme taxation. But human nature being what human nature is, they said, oh, well, you people are a little bit different than me, so uh, we're going to run you off into all the corners, and we're not going to pay attention to anything that you do. I think that's pretty savage. I think it's savage that we're denying our body and spirit to resonate with Mother Earth, and I don't think that is living in integrity. This is from, because half of the people in this country believe in the government, so I had to find the government study. This is from where everybody went and got their, uh, when they allowed themselves to get uh, penetrated with poisons that they didn't know into their flesh by the government. This is the same government. But they're also in agree, they also agree with the massive studies that they could no longer hide from. Which says, the emergent scientific research has revealed surprisingly positive and overlooked environmental factors on health. And they're talking about earthing. They're talking about electrons. They have been found to promote intriguing physiolog physiological changes and subjective reports on well-being. That's earthing. Refers to the discovery of benefits, including better sleep, reduced pain, from walking barefoot outside or sitting outside. That's why I love to walk around barefooted all the time. I don't know if y'all can see this there, people at home. It's good for you. It's healthy. The Earth's electrons from grounding the body is extraordinarily beneficial. So instead of all the signs that say no shoes, we should say, I mean, you can't get service, we should just say no shoes, please. Everybody can walk around with no shoes. It would be fantastic. Quite liberating, actually, especially on a hot day, unless you're on asphalt. Uh, it's fascinating. And because we have talked about it earlier, how important it is to utilize our own reasoning to live in integrity. Look it up. Everybody has a device. Just look up earthing. Look it up. How about resonating frequencies? Who likes to be yelled at? We know that that voice, that energy coming to us, when they yell at somebody else at us, we shut down. Or we get in that flight or fight mode. Like, oh, Randy, you want to yell at me? Do I want to try to leave the situation? Or do I feel a direct threat? And it's all coming from the vibration, the resonance, the energy of you that comes to me. So is it living in integrity just to yell and put off sharing your negativity with other people? Can somebody listen to you as you're screaming and hollering like an idiot? Well, right, figure it out. Our bodies have this resonating frequency. So do we live in integrity when we ignore it? When we don't explore ourselves so we can approve ourselves. You know, governments have done a lot of studies into how our energies affect other people, from the crazy sounding remote viewing, uh, if you don't know what that is, look at it, to all the microwaves that are around us, radio frequencies, sound weapons to, divert, to disperse crowds, medical practices with sound, cell phone towers, our voice, especially our voice. There are all these frequencies and everything around us. Our bodies are producing these frequencies. The earth is producing them. The cosmos is producing them. Close your eyes barefooted and just feel them. Let it calm your soul. Let it connect with others in a positive way. Isn't that what we're, we're supposed to do as humanity? We need each other. In other podcasts, we've talked about how we cannot be alone. Just look at somebody being thrown into jail and being thrown into an isolation makes you go crazy. It shows you that you got to have other people, even if you don't like them. You just need to be around somebody. So is Mother Earth, the universe, the cosmos, God telling us, hey, you might want to work on your energy so you can affect them in a positive way, and they in turn infect and improve you and y'all help each other grow. Isn't that what building real community and understanding and relationships is all about? It, wouldn't that be living in integrity? Is refusing to listen to somebody living in integrity? All of us are responsible for doing this. How many times has somebody said something 
and they're halfway through their sentence and you automatically go, what I'm saying is more important than what you are saying. You are screaming out, I do not respect you. I do not care what you're about to say because what I'm saying is way more important than you. Well, why the hell does somebody ever want to talk to anybody like that? And we've all done it. Who wants to be around somebody that cannot go, oh, I really want to catch myself and let that other person finish what they need to say so I can communicate back clearly. And then we can have a great dialogue. Instead of whatever I'm saying is more important than you, so I'm going to talk louder and over you to shut you up so I can say whatever I want to say. And what do they do? People don't hear you. So then you don't even get your point across because nobody gives a crap. But you just interrupted them and showed them disrespect. So to live in integrity, I don't know, guys. It just seems pretty obvious that we need to be aware of ourselves. We need to be very aware of ourselves. And we need to think about what kind of person we want to be. So we just become that person. Write it down. Think about it. Talk to yourself about it. What do you want to be? How do you want to act? How do you want the people that you love to think about you? Well, just do it. Just be it. It doesn't matter if you screw it up a thousand times. Just keep making those steps. If you don't step and go in that direction, well, you're just wandering off in this maze of BS. You can't hit a target if you're not aiming at a bullseye. You may miss the bullseye a bunch, but if you ain't looking at that bullseye, you're never going to get it. We have to practice listening and communicating well. How else will anybody ever know what we want, what we desire, what we want to love, if we don't understand ourselves and how to communicate? Nobody! Because we don't even know. Because we're not even asking ourselves the questions. And how about be curious? We have this amazing supercomputer in our mind and in our hearts. Are we just wasting it? Is it a lot better to, instead of taking some moments to find something that is interesting to you and read about it, study about it, talk with others about it? Or is it just better to always be in distraction mode? Got to watch the game tonight. Oh, wait, there's another game tomorrow night. Oh, wait, I got to go do this again that has nothing to do with anything except wasting all my time. Because what are you going to do at the end of your life and you realize, man, I really wish I would have known a little bit more about that. Or you discover meditation when you're eight. Yeah. God, man, I bet my life would have been a lot more fulfilling if I'd have known how to talk to myself. I bet those relationships, all these people, I'm at the hospital, uh, about to die, and um, hey, nobody showed up. Standing up for others and ourselves. And it's okay to say no. I'd rather be real comfortable saying no to people. And real comfortable saying yes. We have to share, love, and be a friend. We have to be the friend that we want for ourselves. If we cannot be a friend, when we look at our choice of friends, and just pretend, how do my friends view our friendship? Am I the friend that I would want? And if you say no, well, aim at the bullseye. Keep doing better. If this resonated with any of you, and you live in the local area, come out and see us. Mysticsoftexas.com. Mysticsoftexas.com. And see you next time.